All right, so what I've been showing you was how to do a shape sketch, a shape painting, right? And it's almost complete. I just need to fill in all of these little gray places before I can move it to my big canvas to keep working on it. So I'm going to call this my shape painting sketch. Okay, so that's one approach, one way you can start a digital painting. That's what's demoed here, you know, starting with a shape painting, just big, bold colors, and then kind of defining it with subsequent layers. The other way is to start with a loose kind of linear sketch, like a pencil sketch or charcoal sketch. You can also see these in my slides, the exhaustive explanation of digital painting, which I don't go into into depth into these videos because they're there for you as a resource and they're a little exhaustive. But what you can see is you can often start with kind of an analytical sketch, especially if you're trying to get likeness. So I recommend this for portraiture. I'm demoing this in my freeware playlists uh, where I do Ruth Bader Ginsburg this semester, but it will help you kind of line everything up. So as I show here with the, the Kiwi painting, that starts with just kind of sketched shapes. And then this apple underneath, that starts with a sketched line. But either way, the next step is just filling it with color. So let me take this back before I did the shape painting as rotoscoping. Another thing I can do is a sketched line. And for that, I'm going to use just one color. I'm going to pick a pretty bold color. And then I might use a brush that's a little bit tighter, something like the dry media brush Kyle Ultimate Pencil Hard, right? And it's going to be pressure sensitive still. I'm going to take the flow up. so that it's pretty clear. So if your brush isn't doing much, check your opacity and the flow. In fact, I'll take them both up to 100%. And now all I'm going to do is kind of trace the basic shapes of the anatomy of this reference. This is my hero reference. It's not the only reference I have, but I just want to get kind of the, the shape of everything, the spine. the different components of its anatomy, how things connect. There's the shoulder, right? The rib cage is here. The pelvis is here. The haunch or back legs are here to the knee to here. And then, of course, the tail rounding it out. So what does that look like? like this, right? It kind of shows me where the eye is, the nose, the mouth, the ear, the arm. Once I have that, I can move that sketch, that line sketch, down to my canvas, and then do Command-T, free transform, make it a lot bigger. Now, this is why I like to show this. Because at this stage, you can play with its proportions. So you'll notice that the head is really, really small in my sketch. But those are the actual proportions of this reference. If I wanted to, I could Command T and I can warp it or distort it. And I can make it rounder at the bottom, but also make the head bigger at the top. This is how you can get caricatures, right? to really distort different parts of your reference. So if I didn't want to concentrate on so much of the body of Bigby, my cat, and instead wanted to focus a little bit more on the portraiture of the head, then I've tweaked those proportions a little bit this way. Just like if I'm doing a portrait of a celebrity like Jay-Z, and I just really want to make his forehead bigger than it really is, right, as a caricature, or I want to stretch his head out like a banana, or I want to stretch his head out like a pear, you know, I can do it this way after sketching out the believable proportions, and I can get a pretty good stylistic caricature that still retains likeness. Same with Jay-Z, have no choice but to stretch it out. 
<laughs> so this is also what I did with my shape painting, right? So my shape painting, I just started filling it in. It gets me a little bit closer to the next step, just like this is a little bit closer to this than this is to this, but that's always gonna be the next step to fill in your shapes. And what I love about digital painting is I can take this shape painting sketch now and I can, I'll duplicate it just for good measure, but I can now move that down and I can move it behind my sketch line and I can free transform that, make it bigger. And then I can warp it in the same way to fit the proportions of my sketched line. So there's no right or wrong way to play with these things. You're just trying to make sense of it all. You know, so maybe I like those proportions better than the proportions of the photo reference. Does that make some sense? And that's easiest to do when you're at this sketch phase. And I still have some filling in to do for this. So I can use my brush. And now everything softened a little bit. And now my brush especially as it's tightened up, is going to be a little bit tighter as well. But I like to have that kind of base texture underneath everything to start with. And sometimes I'll even layer it up with a sketch line, or I might just indicate, okay, that's where the eye is. That's where I'm going for the eye. This is where the nose goes. Little triangle there. Might give myself little details just to indicate, like he has this black spot on his nose, so I'll put that in. Right, I gotta fill in a lot here with the feet. And I'm doing it on a gray background so I can see the, the lights and the darks really clearly. Frame in this mouth a little bit. So I move off of the rotoscoping pretty quickly. I move off of painting directly from the, uh, from the reference pretty quickly so that I can start stealing colors from other references. I like to be pretty bold with color, especially at the beginning. And now I'm going to show you how we customize a brush, because the next step is going to be all about customizing your brush. And then using that for really the rest of the painting. Okay, so I've got kind of an approach going. I'm going to save that progress. Now I'm going to close this. Remember that I have it up in preview here, so that's going to help me. Even though I messed with the proportions a little bit, made the head a little bit bigger here, this will show me how everything relates. But now I'm going to save my work, and now I'm going to create a new file. So file new. 
And we're going to make this, this is to design our own custom brush. And I want everyone to do this because it will help you understand how to make a brush better than anything else. We're going to make a new project and we're going to use pixels instead of inches. And we're going to make it a thousand by a thousand pixels. This is how I design brushes. Doesn't matter the resolution because you're already setting the pixels. So you have a, a thousand pixel grid here. I'm going to go to the default colors, black on white, and I'm going to use whatever brush I want. I'll stick with the one I've been using at 100% opacity, 100% flow, and I'm going to make a brush shape. Now think of a brush. A brush is usually made of hairs, right? Sometimes they're thick hairs, sometimes they're thin hairs. But when you dip it in ink and then you stamp it onto a piece of paper, that's what you're going to draw, the shape you want it to make when you stamp it onto paper. So if I want it to be really kind of stiff and in one direction, I'm going to make all my lines like this, just in kind of a shape down the middle. And because I'm using one of Kyle's dry brushes, you can see how the opacity is jittering. And that's going to give my brush some, some interest as well. right? So my cat has some pretty stiff hair, but there's a little bit of randomness in it too. So I'm going to do a few kind of stray marks off the edge. And basically I always do it like this, a tilted kind of 45 degree oval shape. You can make it more rectilinear if you want to, but this is going to give you, I think, the most kind of organic brush. <coughs> for matching kind of what traditional painting is like. So I'm just going to layer it up a little bit so it's full opacity in some places. And you can basically see how just these this built-in dry brush already gives me a pretty good fur texture <laughs> just with black on the white background. But now this is going to be a custom brush I make. I'll do a few stray marks out here. and Procreate, Clip Studio, they all have their own custom brushes built in and they all give you an ability to make your own brush as well or to load your own brushes. When you make a brush, it's called an ABR file and you can actually find them online and download them into your own versions of Photoshop. But it's really easy to make one. So anyway, I've made a shape. It needs to fit within the 1,000 by 1,000 pixels and if you need to, you can always erase I don't like to have it hit the, the edges. So I don't want any kind of artificial hard edges. Okay, now what you do is you go to edit. This is just a black on white file, 1,000 by 1,000 pixels. You say edit, and then you say define brush preset. Then you give it a name. So I'm going to call it FA23-1 Carl. Now I have that brush. You can see it at 1,000 by 1,000 pixels. If I say Command A and delete, delete everything, fill it with white, and I just stamp this brush once with one mouse click, huh, <laughs> I'm not sure why it's not happening. Oh, because I'm on the eraser, sorry. So if I go to the brush, You'll find it down at the bottom now of your brush settings. So that's Carl. It's now on black at 100%. If I just stamp it once with my mouse, I get my brush. So that's all a brush is, is a black shape that you can set as a brush. Now with all default settings, it just looks like this. If I stamp it once, it's really interesting. It has all of that texture, right? But if I let it repeat on itself as a brush stroke, it's just like a big thick marker. So that's why the brush design isn't as important as your brush settings. So now if I go to brush settings, I can play with first the shape dynamics. And I'm going to change the control to be pin pressure so that it goes thick to thin with my pin pressure.